Hey guys, Meet Reynolds, Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. All right, my first stop is up to Kicking Horse up there in BC. Now this was yesterday and it was snowing up there on the mountain up at Kicking Horse yesterday. I was thinking we'd see some snow above six, 7,000 feet and indeed we did. Now I think uh, the emphasis is gonna kind of shift back towards the coastal range. So we'll look at that in my forecast coming up. Um, I wanna show you um, the water vapor satellite imagery here this morning. And again, on this, your drier air is in your oranges and your reds. And that's this entire area of the Intermountain West, the lower 48, the West Coast. That's all dry air down here. The main storm track is being directed up into BC. And that's why we're seeing those waves of rain and snow with those fast moving areas of low pressure. And that's where it's going to stay for the most part, there are a couple of small kinks in the forecast that I'll show you that may affect other areas, but that's the way the forecast pattern looks right now. Let me show you my bullet points here for this update. So storm track continues to favor BC. You can see the rain snow line actually will drop quite a bit lower along the coastal range, maybe to 5,000 feet. Um, so that could even be snow for Whistler in the forecast coming up. Um, so we'll look at those numbers coming up, but the interior about seven to 8,000 feet. So the west coast, the west of the coastal range gets the action, warm air gets blown into the interior. Um, and then one of the kinks in the forecast is gonna be this wind event that rolls through Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and probably parts of Montana between 10.4 and 10.5. And what am I talking about here? Well, just a few of the, uh, the forecast gusts that I'm that I'm seeing, the Grand Teton could have a 100 mile an hour wind gust early on 10-5. So this Saturday is gonna be extremely windy for a period of time up on the Grand Teton, the wind rivers. Um, Long's Peak could have gusts to 90 uh, during the middle part of the day on 10-5 on Saturday as this, there's a, there's a trough that's gonna swing through the northern tier and really put a, a crunch on the, the pressure gradient. Um, Kings Peak, 60 mile an hour winds, or um, probably midday on 10.5. So you can kind of see this wave of energy will roll through Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado between 10.4 and 10.5 with strong winds. In fact, looking at Colorado, my wind forecast at about noontime, you can see it's gonna be blowing pretty hard. Um, where you see the tan color up along the, the front range high peaks from Long's Peak to Cameron Pass, Indian Peaks, all the way up to St. Mary's, and on the Continental Divide up around Berthoud, look at it gusts of 60 plus, 50 to 60 plus. And like I said, Long's Peak could push 90 miles an hour during this time frame, but there's gonna be a lot of wind. Quandary Peak's gonna have wind gusts of 50 mile an hour. So Saturday is just one of those days. Now looking at the forecast as far as precip goes, this is that relative humidity forecast for about three days. Um, this is for Mount Sopras up in the Roaring Fork Valley uh, between Carbondale and Aspen. Um, so on this peak, in this area, in this time slice, it's all dry air, and that's what dominates the atmosphere. Um, you can see the yellows and the oranges represent your dry air. There's no moisture. Um, there's no relative humidity, no moisture content being transported throughout the atmosphere here. So a very dry forecast, and then windy by this upcoming Saturday, Friday into Saturday. Let's look at the jet stream forecast. So here we are by close of business today. Storm track continues to favor the northern tier in BC. Let me put this into uh, the future. There we are on Thursday. There's Friday. Now I'm gonna stop it right there. And you can kind of see the trough. There's a little bit of a dip in the jet. That's the one that's gonna push the pressure gradient through um, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado between 10.4 and 10.5 right there. You can see how it kind of brushes all those areas. And then we're out of it. High pressure dominated to the lower 48, 10.8, 10.9. Now by 10.10 into 10.11, a little shift in the, this is the second kink. You see that little drop in the, the dip in the jet right there on 1011? That may bring at least a brushing amount of precip through parts of the northern tier and maybe, maybe down into parts of Idaho, northern Utah, Wyoming, northern Colorado. We'll have to see if that holds together. Let's look at the forecast precip here. So this is the forecast uh, radar and satellite. By the time we get to 530 this afternoon, again, everything's up to the north very warm and dry, abnormally warm and dry, lower 48. There's that storm system on Friday and the Saturday that brings the wind as it uh, races through. Now here's 10-7, 10-8, the next storm system up in BC. Now by 10-9, uh, 10-10, waiting on the next storm. Now this one again, again, tracks a little bit further to the south. There's 10-11, that could bring some precip, at least a brushing amount through the northern tier and maybe a little bit further to the south, but this is a very warm setup and it would be mainly rain. 
for the lower 48. Looking at that snow forecast, it's all bottled up into parts of BC. Notice there is some snow through the interior, but not as much as the coastal range is going to get. Let me zoom in on that. So you can see the numbers, they're pretty light at lower elevations. But once you get up there to, to the mid and higher elevations, especially up in that coastal range, Whistler all the way up and to the northern latitudes, you're talking bigger accumulations. So at least there's something there. At least the pattern continues to deliver snow uh, to parts of BC at the higher elevations. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this forecast update. Appreciate you tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.